You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on another fun episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And if you have a question, go to AskDroneU.com. We'd love to hear from you anytime you're thinking of something that you don't know and you think we might. Send it on in. Send it on over. Please, please, please send it on over. Anyway, we're going to get to today's question, which is all about mapping with the Mavic 2 Pro, Mavic 2 Enterprise. We actually uh, gave it a try with the Mavic 2 Enterprise. Same thing as Mavic 2 Zoom, just a little bit more accessories. So how did those results turn out? Well, we compared it against Phantom 4 Pro and Mavic 2 Pro on a very complex mapping mission to see what would happen. And what happened? Well, hey guys, it's Joe down in Omaha, Nebraska. The question for you today is about the Mavic Pro 2 Zoom. So. I know that the, when these guys came out that the Mavic Pro 2 doesn't have a mechanical shutter and that there were questions about it not being so good for mapping. I don't remember anything being said about the zoom if it had a mechanical shutter. And also about having a smaller sensor size. So looking at the Z30, I know it has a smaller sensor, but then um, the sales guy said, not to worry about it due to the it's all in the optics so and my brother he is has a phantom 3 pro that he's done some modeling and some mapping with and the stuff has turned out looking all right no no just uh what's your opinion on all this uh that'd be awesome to get your advice thanks bye Thank you, Joe. Appreciate hearing from you. So he's kind of thrown out a few things there as far as birds to consider for mapping. Mm -hmm. um, long story short, um, the answer is it didn't work that well. Uh, so what we did, the exercise that we used, and this wasn't like crazy scientific or anything. I just, you know, went out there and mapped the same thing three, three times in three different ways. So actually on the Huey helicopter model from the NTSB Boneyard, um, I wanted to make sure that the instructions that we were giving students was actually like correct. You know, mm -hmm. I always want to just like verify what I give people. Right. So I mapped the helicopter in the, the way that I had mentioned to them. And then I mapped the helicopter in the, well, maybe here's how I can get some better data on the blade and all that. And that didn't actually help at all. Um, then I mapped it with the Mavic 2 Enterprise. I already mapped with the Mavic 2 Pro enough to know that it's not good. So I mapped with the Mavic 2 Enterprise because I was like, man, maybe the Zoom would give me much better data. Well, what happened is I got a lot less noise in the background. So in the Mavic 2 Pro, it really picked up all the trees, the fence, the aircraft parts and wreckage that were in the boneyard, picked up the building real well. Uh, you know, it got all that, that data. When I was zoomed in with the Mavic 2 Enterprise and utilized that data, um, long story short is what happened? Well, it kind of removed all the background noise, but there was significantly more noise on the helicopter itself hmm. to the point of so much more noise, so much more cleanup, I just decided to scrap the project because I was just like, nah, the Phantom 4 Pro is just that much better. You just got to fly closer. It's really that simple. So seems to be a common theme. Keep trying these other drones and it just keeps circling back to the Mavic 4 Pro. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really think that if DJI were to come out with a, you know, a Phantom 5 with interchangeable lenses, global shutter, bigger sensor, I mean, you're going to have the Mac Daddy of, of mapping drones. And I say that because, you know, a lot of people are like, well, Paul, didn't you just say the P4 RTK is like the way to go? The P4 RTK is great if you have network access, if you have cellular data, and you have um, a GPS station within, you know, 20 clicks or so. Really, you want it closer than that. But if you don't have any of those things, then you're back to the old traditional method. <laughs> Which seems to actually happen a lot. I mean, it's, uh, it's been happening to me every mapping class right. since the RTK came out. <laughs> there you so, go. That would equal uh, a lot. And the thing is, is that like the guy that I trust, you know, Jason from NextGen, I'm always like, you know, 
have you switched over your, your fleet yet to RTK? Cause that's when I'll know it's real, you know? Right. And he did. And he's like, but don't tell it's, don't tell everyone it's for everyone. And I'm like, well, why? He's like, well, Florida has its own GPS corrections network and towers. Oh, wow. So a little bit different from other states that may or may not have that. Also, not a lot of mountains in Florida. Not a lot of things to block a signal. <laughs> like, this is true. <laughs> unless you're so in Disney World. Maybe it's 30 <laughs> clicks in Florida. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're so, better off there. Well, att- attenuation in water in the air would probably inhibit a further distance. True. But that being said, you know, when you're in an area with great network coverage, great cellular coverage, typically and relatively flat, you're, you're probably, you know, going to be in a better position than most unless you're in a very humid environment because water in the atmosphere can affect the signal. Whew, that being said, I've got another person who I really, really trust. In fact, I just texted him, you know who you are, talked to you on the phone in the car yesterday. His team is not going that route. Is that not yet, or they've made this? No, 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 they're, they're not at all. Be- hmm. They're not using the P4 RTK. They Reasoning. Because traditional surveying means of gathering GCPs is more consistent and reliable than P4 RTK. So sometimes that could change. You know, if yeah. if DJI decides to link up with Leica and do SmartNet, or or if you have a subscription to SmartNet, for example, or you can rent one. By the way, um, it does offer more network coverage, but again, you're limited by cellular network coverage. It's interesting how technology. It moves so fast, and in this particular case, sometimes it, like, overshoots the coverage, right? Mm -hmm. In the sense that it's, for something like surveying, drones have, they're proving to be very beneficial, but some of this technology that's coming out is maybe just not quite there yet. It's kind of like how you see people on Facebook and Twitter being like, oh, look, I'm in Dallas, and my phone just got 5G. It's like, well, your phone doesn't have a 5G modem, so how are you going to get 500 gigs down? You're not. So it's kind Placebo. of like... Placebo. Yeah, it, again, it's just <laughs> it like... It feels faster. You know, trust but verify. It's like when you it wash your... It probably is like a little bit faster, but it's not true 5G. You know what I mean? It doesn't even matter. When you wash your car, does it run better? <laughs> Mine does. <laughs> you know what runs better? My mind. Because <laughs> I there feel better that it looks good. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, oh, and, and exactly. Right. But it's just like, you know, the other thing too, and this is a question I, I probably should have asked Jason before I mentioned it on the show. But one question I have is, you know, for everyone who's using P4 RTK and no GCPs, it's like, are you still shooting checkpoints though? Because how are you really comparing that data unless you put it in ArcGIS? <laughs> Um, I know Jason is still shooting corner points on his surveys, so he probably has those quote unquote checkpoints. Um, but for other people, I'm just like, you're not using any GCPs or checkpoints. Like, how are you going to verify your data? Like, uh, just don't get that. So, yeah. Anyway, long story short, his question of, you know, Mavic to Enterprise or Mavic to Zoom, pretty much the same camera, same Zoom. Is it good for mapping? Not really. So he did mention really quick the uh, his brother is using the Phantom 3 Pro and getting pretty good Pretty good results Pretty until good he results. sees a Phantom 4 Pro results. So it's, it's relative. Yeah. Yeah. So Cool. Linear rolling shutter, global shutter, massive difference. All I'm going to say on that bombshell, that's going to do it for today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. <laughs> this is another linear rolling shutter beatdown. down.